Continuing with section 4.9, here's another quadratic application. As part of a stunt for a late night TV show, an intern throws a golf ball upward from a Manhattan balcony at a speed of 32 feet per second. Okay, and so they put in some information here that you have to know that the height is, they give us our equation right there, the height of the ball t seconds after it's thrown is negative 16 t squared, I'm sorry, negative 16 times the quantity t squared minus 2t minus 3. This is the height of the ball in t seconds after it's thrown. And this is only true if you're ignoring friction and wind and such. So from what height is the ball thrown? Okay, so that means when time is zero. It hasn't been any time since it's been thrown. At the exact moment, it's thrown the height when t is zero is negative 16, zero squared, minus two times zero, minus three which is negative 16, and that's going to be 0 minus 0 minus 3. Negative 16 times negative 3 is positive 48 feet. This golf ball was thrown from a height of 48 feet. So t equals 0 is the exact moment when the ball is thrown. All right, so we have height at times t is negative 16 t squared minus 2t minus 3. Now remember before in our last, last example when we set the equation equal to 0, we said, oh, well, either when this first factor equals 0 or the second factor equals 0, in order to find the values for t, when a function will equal 0, we would have to factor this. Factor means break it up into two binomials, t's. Basically, you're undoing the distributive property. We want two numbers when they are multiplied give us negative 3. But when they are added, they give us negative 2. That's what you're looking for in this quadratic when it comes to factoring. Two numbers multiplied that give you negative 3, but when they're added, they give you negative 2. And so that's going to be a negative 3 and a positive 1, because when you multiply negative 3 times 1, you get negative 3. But when you add negative 3 plus 1, you get negative 2. So my two numbers are negative 3 and positive 1. And if we were to multiply everything here by t, and then multiply everything here by negative 3, that's what we would get up here. So the this is really the answer to this question. These are the factors of t squared minus 2t minus 3. So question 9 says find the zeros. The zeros, that's another way of saying x-intercepts. That's another way of saying when y equals 0. In other words, when does my equation equal 0? negative 16 times 3 minus, uh, t minus 3 times t plus 1. If this times this times this equals 0, then either negative 16 equals 0, or t minus 3 equals 0, or t plus 1 equals 0. 1, 2, 3 factors, 3 things I'm multiplying together if the result is 0, either the first, the second, or the third factor equals 0. Now let's go ahead and look at this. 
Will negative 16 ever equal 0? No. So we're going to disregard that as a possible solution. Here we'll add 3 to both sides. So when t equals 3, t minus 3 will equal 0. And here we're going to subtract 1 from both sides. So when t, when time is negative 1. Now remember, this t stands for time since the ball is thrown. It wouldn't make sense for to go back in time. There's no time machine here. Time cannot be negative. So the only zero, the only time when this problem, for this problem, the only time when this ball will actually hit the ground is at t equals 3 seconds. So if you wanted to kind of see what that looks like, here we are on a balcony 48 feet high. You know, so here's the guy with the golf ball. And he throws the golf ball. One, two, three. Hits the ground exactly at three seconds because the height at three seconds equals zero.